Hello, today's video is on our stock number 35668ME, a battery capacitance meter. Uh, first off, I have the lights kind of turned down some just to try to best show the display. Uh, even with that, you can see a little flicker rate. That's due to the screen, uh, refresh rate of the camera. When you're looking at it with your eyes, you, you really don't can't see that. And also, it's a, actually a nice darker blue than this. It shows kind of a pale blue, but it's a little bit darker. But uh, that's the best I can do with the equipment I currently currently have and knowledge I have on, on video. Uh, first off, uh, it is not waterproof, as you can see. It's, it has to be protected. All the programming and and such is done through this one button on the back and when it's like this in the operating mode it merely switches between the voltage and the percent of the battery capacitance. Uh, it would be nice if that button was on the front but they put it on the back. So you get to choose between voltage or percentage as, as it in operating mode. Um, first off it mounts in a 51 millimeter by 20.5 millimeter cutout and the mounting holes, tabs, are on uh, 53 millimeter mounts, uh, centers. Uh, it operates off of 6 to 60 volts DC. That is important. I'll, I'll show you in a few minutes why, why that is important. I also like to move around and give you an idea what the, the field of view is on a display. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and start. It comes factory set. Uh, for a 12 volt DC lead acid battery and at 13 volts that's pretty much 100% like I say I'm, I'm pressing the button on the back to switch between voltage and percent and I have this hooked up to a bench top power supply uh, go ahead and turn it down to about 12 volts uh, you see it has a very slow response rate because it, it's designed to work with the, the drain on a battery which is a very slow steady drain and as you can see, it's, uh, that's why they call it a capacitance. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the drop is not linear. There is a curve. The lower the uh, voltage gets, the uh, quicker the battery capacity dissipates. So you can see right at around 12 volts, and I'm pressing the button on the back, is down to about 37%. If I were to turn this down to about 11 volts, that's pretty much considered fully discharged. And if it gets below 11 volts, yeah, let's go ahead and switch it over. It will actually start flashing between you know, 0% and let you know you, your battery is totally exhausted. Now let's go ahead and turn that back up to 13 volts. And I'm pressing the button on the back end. You can see how it slowly counts that back up to 100%. Okay, now let's get into the programming of it because it can be used, even though it comes factory set for a 12 volt DC lead acid, it can be used in many different configurations. So let's go and start learning how to program. You have the button on the back, you press and hold the button, and you turn power off. Keep holding the button and turn the power on. We've entered the uh, the setting. This is set up for one lead acid cell, 12 volt DC. Uh, you can use up oh, two, three, four lead acid cells, which would be 48 volts. Uh, it does have a setting for five, but that's 60 volts. But that is listed as the maximum voltage for the meter, so I would not recommend using this on a 60 volt lead acid system. Press the button on the back again, and we enter F1. Uh, F1 is for 3.2 volt lithium series batteries. Uh, there again, next problem, the, uh, the minimum operating is 6 volts for this meter. So one 3.2 cell won't have enough power to operate it. Same with a 2. But you can start using it at a 3 cell configuration and press the button every time and it will work up to 19 3.2 volt cells, which may, yeah, that would actually exceed the upper end of 60 volts. So I would not recommend using the 19 volt, 19 cell configuration. You press the button again and you get the 1C. 
That is for 3.7 volt lithium series batteries. There again, one cell is not enough to power the meter. It's still well below six volts. Two, uh, I'm not sure where it, the discharge rate is on those. So I would not recommend it for a two 3.7 volt battery system. But there again, you can start with three and count all the way up to 16 cells, which would also, also exceed 60 volts. So that's what the factory says. Uh, so I'm not recommending using it beyond 60 volts in a charging circuit. Then you start over again at your one, uh, one lead acid battery. So let's go ahead now to get into regular operation mode. Simply turn off power. And since we are not pressing the button, you're back in operational mode. Like I said, press the button on the back. We'll show you the voltage. Press again, we'll show you the percent. Now, let's show you about the 6 volt problem. Let me go, oops, switch this over to the voltage and show you what happens when this gets below actually about 6.5 volts. It's actually still trying to catch up right now. My benchtop power supply is at 6.7 volts. As you can see, the uh, display has died out. Turn the voltage up just a touch. It's interesting when it dropped below a certain voltage, the display went out and would not come back. So yes, I would not recommend getting this below 7 volts. That's in the uh, 12 volt DC. Let's let me go ahead and try getting into the uh, lithium. See what happens here. Oops. Turn it off. Press and hold the button. Two. That would be 6.4 volts. So now when we get below. My benchtop power supply is down to 6.7 volts. It's catching up slowly. As you can see, the display starts to dim. So yes, as you can see, you really cannot use this below 6 volts DC. Hopefully this uh, answers your questions. Thank you for watching our video.